Hello again, everyone. Uh, all right, so this video is just going to be a relatively short one. Um, between when I finished recording the last modeling video and the next few videos where we're going to get into modeling and texturing, uh, I did a little bit of extra work. So I went from this to this, just because I couldn't help myself. Um, I'm not going to go over step by step how I modeled everything. I didn't do anything new, um, maybe with the exception of this little vent piece, but we'll talk about that here in a minute. Uh, but I just want to kind of show you what I did, um, maybe give you a little bit more ideas of what you can do, um, just so that when I, when I do move on to materials and texturing and UVs, you're not confused and you don't think you've missed anything. Okay, so I'll go back to the other version of this. Um, this is perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with what's going on here. I just felt like it was, it felt a little empty up here, and I know we're going to do some texturing um but i wanted to give it a little bit more just a little bit more uh and so i added a few things go to the right version there we go uh it's added some cables i moved this vent up um turn the pylons around do they were facing this way and i just flip them around uh, but really the only big difference is the cables and uh, this box and I move this sign around too. Um, so I guess first I'll talk about why I move some things. Like I said, I wanted to fill up this area a little bit more. So I moved the, uh, the vent up. Um, I am also, I want to do like a fabric awning or something here. At least that's kind of what I'm thinking. Then it'll be later down the line. Um, but I wanted to make room for that. So I moved that up. I moved the sign over also for that reason. Um, I also brought it in a little bit. I just kind of shortened the legs. Let's grab this. I just, oops, don't worry about that. That's a later video. Um, GUI and just kind of move that in to get the, the, the length that I wanted. I'm trying to get variation in things. I also, I um, can't remember. Okay, it looks like I did already do that. I'm trying to remember what I did uh, on video and not on video since that was a week and a half ago or two weeks ago that I recorded it. Um, see, this version doesn't have the lines in the sidewalk. It's because I decided to go with a different texture, so I just dissolved those edges. Um, didn't need the lines. That'll be achieved through texturing. Um, I added some additional cables, and these are just plain cables that are going all the way across, and then just hanging down the backside. You're not going to see that. Uh, but I did those the same way that I did these. Uh, this cable as well. I just, um... Same way, start with a, a curve, and um, one thing to remember with curves, I don't know, put a busier curve here and go into edit mode, you can either select two points and subdivide them to get a third point, um, or you can also select an end and hit E to extrude it. And so once you have that, then you can start moving and rotating, uh, turn on your uh, bevel depth and the curve options, so you can kind of see what that's going to look like. And then you can start positioning it um, accordingly. So that's all I did to bring that down the side. Just was try to be careful. There, I'm sure there's probably some clipping, um, but I did my best to not make it obvious. Okay. Um, I'll talk about the box probably last. Um, now I've got these four cables, and so I just I duplicated one cable or. or or made one cable, extruded it out, and I locked it to the x-axis and just try to keep it straight. Um, I've already turned this into a mesh so you can't see the, the handles, but I kept the, the curve handles straight. Um, and I guess I'll add that Bezier curve back. So if we select the points, um, and let's see, we can clear rotation, or we can clear tilt. Um, I think what I did is I just took the end one and just extrude an X, and that's going to create a straight line. Again, I'll turn on my bevel depth so we can see that. But as long as we're extruding a straight line, that'll stay there. Um, if we wanted to straighten this one out, just kind of rotate that so it's flat. Okay, so once I had that, um, I'll extrude one out down here just so we can see this. 
once I had the first cable, um, I just duplicated it, moved it down, GZ, my screencast keys that I always forget. Okay, moved it down. And then I took the end here, just added some variation to it. Okay. And then I also, if we looked at look at these actual curves here, side, a little easier to see. If we look at these curves here, see they're vertically lined up, um, but then as they come around in here, they spread out horizontally. Right, I've got some holes in the bottom of this. So when I made my duplicates, once I duplicated and move, moved it down, just grab the bottom and move it over and rotate it however you want. Um, all right, and if you want a a larger curve, you can just scale out the handle. If you want a tighter curve, you can scale it down. Okay, so that sort of thing. Super simple for that. Um, I did make it kind of follow the outline of the building and that's just with the handles um, and I made some very simple brackets that serve two purposes one is to uh, just give some more detail these are also extremely simple um, definitely kind of a low lift sort of thing here used a uh, mirror modifier over the uh, z-axis so it would be mirrored down um, as far as making the shape Demonstrate that real quick on front view. We'll add one in right here. So I just add a cube. Edit mode, scale it way down. Okay. Go to local view, so we're just looking at the cube. Scale it in the y-axis. Add our center edge loop. Uh, delete those bottom vertices and add in our mirror modifier. Set a Z axis. So there's that. We'll turn on clipping. Uh, and then it's just, we'll extrude that up. And then I will extrude it up a little bit more. Basically, I'm looking to make a square face right here. So then I can take, I can take this face, extrude it in the Y direction. Oops, DY. And so now I've made my 90 degree turn. And then just to make the edge flow, work a little bit smoother. This is kind of an optional thing. You don't need to do it, but selected these three vertices, merge at last. And same thing on the other side here. Actually, instead of that, um, I'm going to undo that real quick because we can make our mirror modifier do extra work for us. It can also work on the x-axis. We'll just do that. Add in our edge loop. Um, and delete half of it. Uh, but also, I believe... This is a newer feature in Mirror Modifier I'm just not used to using. Um, but we can turn on Bisect and Flip. If I don't add in that uh, center loop. Actually, I'll add it in anyway, just because it's good to have a center loop. If I merge these uh, at last, you can see that it did that on the other side as well, at least in the mirror. Um, we just need to turn on Bisect and Flip in... on show in edit mode. Yeah, bisect and you can see that it kind of does that automatically, but we still need to do that on the center one. Merge at last. Okay, so now we have um, geometry that flows all the way around. It just makes it a little bit easier. Still add in our edge loops here to tighten everything up so that when we hit control two on in object mode to add a subsurface modifier, everything stays nice and tight. Okay, there's that. Um, got a local view here. So I added that, and then I use the uh, the bolt factory add-on, which is again default in in Blender. Um, just use that to create this hex head. Uh, there's no thread on it. Just deleted all those vertices. I don't need it. Um, it's just for just for the, the for the head of it. So I said these these brackets do two things. Um, oh, I also I parented the bolts to the bracket just around. 
Um, they they obviously give more detail and visual interest and aesthetic qualities to the scene. But they also will allow me to, when I UV unwrap these um, cables, it will allow me to place a seam uh, behind them and give me just a little bit more detail in the textures. And I'll talk about that again when I actually record the, the UV unwrapping for cables, um, how I did that. But I just wanted to kind of plant that seed now so you kind of understand what I was going for there. Um, yeah, all right. I think so. The last thing to really talk about is this box. Um, I just searched uh, on Google for a uh, electrical box, and I found this. I searched electrical box. This came up, um, and I liked it. So that's what I made. Um, the The door itself, just going to local view here, is just a cube. Um, and actually, when I unwrap it, I delete this face, because I'm never, whoops, not that one face. Oh, I already did delete it, that's right. Um, I deleted the back face, just, let me turn off, uh, let me turn off subsurf so you can see, there we go. You'll see that the back face is deleted because I don't need it. Um, this handle here, I made with a cylinder, you can actually see grab this face loop. Okay, so you can see the cylinder here. Uh, don't worry about the red lines. Those are seams. Um, I know I can turn those off. I just got to remember where. Um, honestly, don't remember where. remember um, but yeah don't worry about the red lines for now but you can see that there is a cylinder um, here I just extruded that out gave it a little bit of a an inset um, extruded detail and then extruded it in or inset it in and it in a little bit for that detail uh, and then I took the bottom two faces and just extruded them down okay so I mean it would be like the same if I did it up here grab these two and then you want to grab border faces as well and extrude it in the z direction okay this is that same type of thing sx and then i'm going to add in another one another edge loop right up here and gz and move it down also scale it in the z direction to kind of flatten that out a little bit And then maybe we'll grab these. Something like that. Okay, so that's all I did for that handle. Um, like I said, these are all very kind of quick things uh, that were just to get a little bit of extra detail. Even though, like, this handle, in, in all reality, is probably never going to be seen. But it was a very quick thing to make, so I did that. Um, this piece right here, you could actually make this lid a separate piece if you wanted to. Um, it's all in how much detail that you want to bring to it. I mean, if we look at this image right here, <clears throat> excuse me, look at this image right here, um, kind of low quality, but if we think about how this would actually be made, this would be sheet metal that is kind of bended over and riveted. Um, so there could be more seams. There's hinges that I didn't model. Um, but it gave me the, the indication of electrical box, and that's what I wanted. Uh, and then I made this, I initially made this all as one piece, but I decided to separate it out because if we kind of compare the edge flow here, there's just more edges here, and I didn't need those going all the way through the main box. So I separated out the face to focus on these vents. Um, and so the way that I did these vents, this one I will actually show, go into the side view here. We're going to add in a plane. I have an edit mode, I'm going to rotate it um, so it's in the side view around the y-axis, 90 degrees, and we'll scale it down. And SY. Get roughly that size. Okay, so the way that I did these is first we need to use some edge loops to kind of define the area uh, that we are 
going to have these events, so we'll go something like that. And then how many events that we want. Okay, so we'll say something like this. And I'll right click to keep it in the center. All right, so. Oh, you can see that this is not in the same plane. Let me move that so it's in line. Okay. So now that we have that, um, each of these edges is going to be one of these vent openings. And um, actually, I'm going to add in one more edge loop above each. Okay, so this is going to be where that edge stops. Now I can grab every other edge. And I believe this is a tool I haven't actually shown yet. Uh, it's the rip tool. And what you do is you hit V, and it rips those edges apart. Now, something to consider about the rip tool, I'm going to undo that, uh, is that the rip tool is based on which side of the edge your cursor is. Okay, so let me just focus on one edge for a second here. So right now my cursor is below the edge. So if I hit V to rip, and I pull down, you can see that at the edge, I'm, I'm holding the bottom edge, the bottom end of the rip. Right, if I right click to cancel the move and Z to undo, and then I'm going to hit Move my, my cursor above the edge, hit V and rip. Now it's on the top. That's an important concept to, to know so that when you select multiple edges, you have your cursor on above all of the edges. If you have it only above some of them, hit V to rip. You can see that I've got the top edge of, of some, I've got the bottom edge of others, which is obviously not what we want. So, um, I'm going to just undo and make sure that I undid far enough. Move my cursor above all of the edges and hit V to rip and Z to keep it in that direction. Um, so maybe I'll go up a little bit. Probably not much, but something like that. And then G and X and we'll move it out a little bit. Okay. So there's the basics of, of those vents. Uh, if you wanted to keep it low poly, this would actually work just fine. Uh, but I smoothed it out, and so I will go through that process. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab all these vertices. I should have added an edge loop on both sides before I did the rip. Um, but we can just extrude it and move it in the Y direction a little bit and get that row of faces back. So extrude Y. So now we've got some bounding edges there. And kind of can compare kind of compare our geometry here. So I did do some um, edge reduction by merging vertices, and that's how we have these uh, these corners, these diagonal corners, but it's just adding See, I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna add two at a time. This is gonna allow me to just grab all the edges and grab that edge, that edge. Now I can grab all of the edges and just scale them out away from each other and then they'll stay even and consistent. Back to side view. I'll do this in, uh, in wireframe. I think it's probably a little bit easier to see. Just X, or sorry, S, Y, go right to that corner. And same thing here. That one. We can even go into vertex mode here and just marquee select box select that hold down shift and select E as well. Okay. Again, S Y. Um 
Okay, so when I do this, you can see since that's at an angle, it's actually pinching this, and I don't want to do that. So instead, we'll uh, just deselect that, and I'm just going to grab just one side, and then I'll double tap G and edge slide it over. And I'll do the same thing. I'll do the same thing on the other side. I'll select all of these. Double tap G and slide it over. Okay. That'll help with the pinching. Um, go in object mode and hit control two to add in our subsurface modifier and shade smooth. Uh, and this will kind of tell us where we need some more detail. I will turn that off in edit mode. Uh, and then I'll just I'm gonna focus on just one. Just focus on this top one. Uh, but you would just repeat this for all of them. You need to add an edge loop down here and another one up here. Okay. Kind of add some edge loops here to sharpen that up as well. Maybe one more here. Okay. See that looks a lot better. Um, and we can actually do the same thing uh, as before. Is we can add in a mirror modifier. We'll move this above our subsurface. And we want to go in the Y direction and we'll turn on bisect. And now, oh, and clipping. We're clipping. Okay, now you can see that the changes I made on the right side work here on the left side. Uh, and then the last thing I do is I just took the inside uh, edge loop here and extrude it up little bit so we'll go in the z direction also move it back in this case in the x direction and maybe scale it down a little bit okay then you know what i'll actually i think i will go into the front view so we can see the side of it and move it back even more scale it down uh, and then I want to scale it more in the X direction okay and I'm gonna add one more loop right here like that I think and I'll scale that down as well I want to give this some thickness on the edge Let's say S Z zero and that's gonna flatten it out. Move that down a little bit. Go move it, snap it to that height. Okay, now that's got some thickness to it. Uh, and then once I had all of that, I just mirrored it. I moved the uh, pivot point to the center and just mirrored it over to the other side. You can also just manually copy it. Um, enough to place one object so that's that's it that's what i did uh for the scene and you could you could take this even further you could add more cables and really make it kind of this tangled mess you could add um you know if this is cyberpunk you could add more tvs you could add more light sources you could add in a um, neon sign use curves to make letters and you can have that as a neon sign um, you can add little models for like trash and debris on the ground, all sorts of things. Um, you know, I, I just, I had to stop at some point because we do need to actually finish this, but by all means, go as far as you want, um, make a, a really cool scene. So, uh, next video, we will actually start talking about textures, um, how we can use them to give our materials way more life than we did last semester, and then we will get into UV um, unwrapping and actually applying those textures.